Here we're gonna try a little something different. We're gonna try a problem from a physics Olympiad. So this is from the 2017 USA Physics Olympiad. So here's the setup. We've got a triangular block sitting on the ground and this angle in the triangular block is given by theta. Then resting on top of that block, we have another triangular block and it has the same sort of angle, so it's like a similar triangle. And we can see that because this is a horizontal line segment here. Okay, and then we have all of these measurements. So the mass of the large block is two times m, the mass of the small block is m, and then the coefficient of friction everywhere in this system is given by mu. Furthermore, we're pushing this whole system to the left like this, so a force is being applied in that direction. And our goal is to determine the range of forces that can be applied that make this green block not slide. So notice, if this is slippery enough and everything is stationary, then this green block will tend to slide down. Furthermore, if this is slippery enough and we're pushing very, very hard in this direction, this green block would slide up. So we're gonna have to look at both of those cases here. Okay, so first off, I wanna look at the force on this entire system. So I'll maybe give that a vector value and I'll call it F with an arrow over it, whole. So this is happening to this whole two block system. Okay, so like I said, I'll give it a two vector value. So notice in the horizontal direction, we just have this value F being applied. And in the vertical direction, well, this thing is not moving at all in the vertical direction. This thing is just staying still. Again, we're kind of assuming that this is not sliding. That's our overall goal. Okay, but now we can decompose what's going on with this force. We can decompose it like this. So this is going to be equal to 3 times m times a. So that would be the mass of the whole system, 3 times m. Well, m plus 2m times the acceleration of the whole system. But then some of that force being applied doesn't go directly into acceleration. It gets gobbled up by the coefficient of friction, which is happening along this plane right here. So we have to subtract a bit away from that. And the bit that we have to subtract away is given by 3m times mu times g. And then again, nothing is happening in the vertical direction, so we've got a zero component for that vector. So why is it 3 times m times mu times g? Well, we'll have 3 times m times g because that is the normal force with respect to this direction that this thing is going, and then mu is our coefficient of friction. So that's our whole setup here. Now we want to think about this f as being something which is small. So let's sketch out the picture of what's happening when this force being applied is small. So let's just think about the force being applied being zero. So that means this green block would tend to slide down, which means the friction force would point up. So if we put a normal vector here, we'll call this n, then the friction force pointing up will be given by mu times n, given that mu is that coefficient of friction. But now we can use the fact that this angle here is also theta to decompose this coordinate system, which is n and mu n, into our standard coordinate system, which is going like in that direction and up. So let's maybe do that real quick. So we'll have f happening on the small block. So this is again decomposing the forces acting on the small block into a vector component. So first of all, we have m times a and then m times g for the horizontal force and the vertical force, just without even really doing much calculation at all yet. Again, that's because this thing is accelerating at a rate of a in that direction, and then we've got an acceleration due to gravity down. Okay, but now again, by decomposing this via the angle theta, this n, and this mu n, we can see that in the horizontal direction, we'll get n times sine theta minus mu n times cosine theta. And then in the vertical direction, we'll get n times cosine theta plus 
mu n times sine theta. Next up, we can equate this horizontal component with this horizontal component, and then this vertical component with this vertical component, and then solve for n, as we're not really gonna need n in the calculation after this. So that's gonna give us m times a equals, so I'll maybe factor an n out and see that we get n times sine theta minus mu cosine theta. So that's from the green overline. And then we have m times g will be equal to n times cosine theta plus mu sine theta, like that. But now we can take this second one and solve for n, and we see that we get n equals m times g divided by cosine theta plus mu sine theta and then plug that into our m times a component. So let's do that. m times a equals m times g, and then this quotient of things with cosines and sines. So we've got sine theta minus mu cosine theta in the numerator, and then we have cosine theta plus mu sine theta in the denominator. Okay, so let's see what we've determined here. We've determined the m times a, or really the acceleration that needs to be applied so that this thing does not slide down. Okay, well we can take this value for m times a and plug it in up here, and that'll give you the, the value of this f so that our block does not slide down. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So that means our f will be equal to, so we'll have three times m times a, but that's gonna be this thing right here. So we'll have three times mg times this whole thing here, sine theta minus mu cosine theta over cosine theta plus mu sine theta, and then minus three times m times mu times g, like that. So since this is the force that is related to keeping this thing from sliding down, this would be the minimum such force that needs to be applied in order to keep this thing from sliding down. Now before we move on to calculating the maximum such force, I want to point out that it's possible for no acceleration at all to be required in order to keep this thing from sliding down. You could think about that because of maybe the angle or maybe this is like Velcro on this side and Velcro on this side. So that means this thing sitting stationary would have enough friction to keep that from sliding down. But then we would get no horizontal acceleration for the small block. In other words, this quantity would be equal to zero. But this quantity is equal to zero when this numerator is equal to zero. But then this numerator is equal to zero when mu is equal to tangent theta. But we have a negative acceleration when then this thing is less than tangent theta. So that would be like even worse. We could pull this in this direction, it, it still wouldn't slide down. So just to reiterate, for mu values that are less than the tangent of theta, there is no minimum. And I guess I should say no like positive minimum. Okay, so let's get rid of this and then we'll look at the other case. So we just looked at the case when the force being applied was small, which means this green block would tend to slide down. Now we're gonna look at the case when the force being applied is large. So if you're really shoving this bottom block to the left, then this green block would tend to go up. But if this block is tending to slide up, then that means the friction force would be pointing down. And if we put this normal vector here, like we did before, that means the friction force in this direction will be given by mu times this normal vector. Okay, so now we can decompose the force being applied on the small block again into a vector component thing. So this is again gonna be m times a times m, or comma m times g. So that would be the horizontal component and the vertical component. Using the fact that we have an angle of theta here, and then we've got this normal vector in this direction, and then this mu times n in this direction, we can do some trigonometry and find out this m times a and this m times g in terms of n, mu, and theta. And in fact, 
after doing, like I said, some elementary trigonometry, we'll get that this is n times sine theta plus mu times n times cosine theta, comma, n times cosine theta, and then minus mu times n times sine theta. So again, we can see that just by completing triangles here. I think maybe the most important triangle to complete would be this one that we're thinking about like this. So notice here we have an angle of theta, then we can easily take the sine and cosine of that angle and see that we get these things in terms of mu n and n. Okay, great. So now we want to set the horizontal component equal to the horizontal component and the vertical component equal to the vertical component and play the same game that we did before. So here we have m times a is equal to n sine theta plus mu n cos theta. And then we have m times g is equal to n cos theta minus mu times n times sine theta. So we can solve this second equation maybe in terms of n. So that means that n is equal to m times g over cos theta minus mu n sine theta. And then plug this value of n up here. That's going to give us the maximum such acceleration that this whole system can have in order for the block to not go up. So let's go ahead and look at that again. So plugging that up there, what do we get for m times a? So we'll get m times a is equal to, so it'll be m times g times the quantity. Well, so we'll have sine plus mu cosine. Um, over cosine minus mu sine. And I realized I have an n here that should disappear. So next, our final goal is to find the maximum force, not the maximum acceleration, which will keep this from sliding upwards. And so we can get that by plugging this value of m times a into this expression for the force right here. So let's see what we get for that. That's gonna give us three times mg times this thing. So we've got sine theta plus mu cosine theta over cosine theta minus mu sine theta. And then finally minus three m mu g. Now, the next thing that we might wanna think about is, is there some sort of amount of friction that would keep this thing from sliding regardless of how hard we push it? And we can see that by considering when this quantity would be equal to something that is negative. And that is gonna occur, well, the numerator can never be negative, so that'll occur when the denominator is negative. But moving everything around there, as we did in the previous setup, we'll see that there is no maximum force if the mu is bigger than the cotangent of theta. Again, we can get that by setting this thing down here to something less than zero and then solving for mu. Okay, so that's a good place to stop. The Super Program is a program uh, which is meant to train the nation's future scientists. We are trying to recruit the best math and science students who want to have a career in sciences, who want to go to grad school in sciences, and we want to best prepare them to be successful. If you are a high school student interested in studying science, math, or engineering, we would love to have you in the Super Program at Randolph once you begin college. We have scholarships available for this honors program, courtesy of the National Science Foundation and BWX Technologies. Please see our video and more information at www.randolphcollege.edu super or just Google Randolph College and Super.